the meteor crisis that will affect millions of Americans. Most Venezuelans have left their country and are staying in other parts of Latin America and the Caribbean. However, in recent months, a large number have begun undertaking the arduous and perilous journey to the United States. Between 2015 and 2018, over 100 Venezuelans were arrested here at the border. Between October 2021 and the end of August 2022, about 150,000 people were taken into custody. Since the spring of 2022, more than 130,600 migrants had landed in New York City as of mid-October. People have been arriving from all over the world, sometimes in their thousands every week, making it difficult for officials to respond. Numerous people have sought refuge with the city, which is required by law to provide beds to anyone who requests them. The number of people using the city's homeless shelters reached a record last autumn. Since then, it's just gotten bigger. It is a humanitarian crisis, according to Mayor Eric Adams, and it will cost the city almost $12 billion over three years. He issued a state of emergency in the fall. Officials from the city have stated that they are running out of space in recent weeks. To help immigrants become self-sufficient, the mayor has frequently requested greater funding from the federal government and has even visited Washington. She has also lobbied for quicker work permits for immigrants. He claimed that by not doing more, President Biden had failed the city. At a recent press conference, Mr. Adams stated, while New York City will continue to lead, it's time the state and federal government step up. Mr. Adams has also started to dissuade refugees from seeking sanctuary in New York City, while the city finds it difficult to react. He visited with migrants in Mexico, Ecuador, and Colombia at the beginning of October to convey the idea that New York City has reached capacity. Why are so many people migrating to New York City right now? Venezuelans who had crossed the southern border were among the many newcomers to New York City last year. As of February, almost 7 million refugees and migrants had flooded Venezuela, a nation of 29 million people, according to Response for Venezuelans, an initiative involving the UN High Commissioner for Refugees and the International Organization for Migration. As per the United Nations panel, this external displacement problem ranks second globally. Aside from times of war, economists claim that Venezuela's economic collapse was one of the most severe they had ever witnessed. Under a totalitarian socialist regime, the nation's finances have faltered. To topple President Nicolas Maduro's government, the Trump administration also placed sanctions on Venezuela's state-owned oil industry in 2019. This tactic was momentarily relaxed under President Biden. More recently, a significant influx of migrants has also originated from African nations. With the assistance of Texas authorities, thousands of people have crossed the southern border and arrived in New York. To stir up controversy and compel the federal government to strengthen border security, Governor Greg Abbott has dispatched the thousands of people. However, the number of people who have arrived is not entirely explained by Mr. Abbott's buses. Some have found their way in El Paso, a city headed by Democrats, has also dispatched new arrivals to New York at the request of the migrants, according to municipal officials. In what way is the city reacting? The city established a new organization to assist in coordinating the arrivals of migrants and converted a disused hotel in Midtown into an intake center. However, as the shelter system has grown increasingly overburdened, the city's response has occasionally been disjointed and reactive. As of October, more than 65,400 migrants were residing in city homeless shelters, according to information released this week by Deputy Mayor for Health and Human Services Ann williams Isom. According to statistics, there were 119,600 persons residing in homeless shelters throughout the city. The city has suggested hosting migrants in emergencies in several areas. It has provided housing in hotels, business buildings, school gymnasiums, emergency tent shelters on Randall's Island and hotels. Currently, it is searching for new locations such as a state mental health hospital's parking lot. Residents have opposed several of the ideas and in some situations, the city has backtracked. Mr. Adams once gave the idea of sheltering migrants on cruise ships significant thought. By September, the city had welcomed more than 213 asylum applicants into more than 17 humanitarian aid centers and housing places. Mr. Adams' messaging and strategy for sheltering them have evolved as more and more migrants have arrived. He has requested that a judge release the city from some of its legal duties about its special right to shelter mandate. This spring, in preparation for a wave of new immigrants, he invoked an executive order to postpone part of the mandate's provisions. This summer, once it was announced that the shelters were full, hundreds of men, many of them from Africa, slept on the sidewalk outside a Manhattan processing center. The Adams administration has been discouraging migrants from entering the country in recent months by handing out flyers at the southern border informing them that there is no guarantee they will receive services or shelter. New York City housing is extremely costly, the flyer stated. Please take into account another city when deciding where to settle in the United States. 
Additionally, the city has assisted migrants in leaving the city for other countries in New York, which has infuriated certain state politicians in other regions. Many of the migrants traveling with Mr. Adams claim that despite his cautions, they would press on toward the United States and New York while he traversed Latin America. What is the expense of providing care for newcomers to the city? According to the city's estimates, housing and feeding migrants will cost it roughly $5 billion in this fiscal year. According to Mr. Adams, if immigration kept up its current pace over the next three years, the price tag would surpass $12 billion. Governor Kathy Hochul has declared that she will request that the state legislature include $1 billion in aid for the city in the upcoming budget. She stated that the new tent shelter on Randall's Island is being funded by the state, which has already contributed $1 billion. The city's expenditures have occasionally been questioned. Under a no-bid $432 million contract, DACO, a medical services company that was previously contracted by the city to conduct COVID testing and vaccinations, has relocated hundreds of migrants outside the city. According to the terms of the contract, the organization was to lodge migrants, give them food and offer case management, transportation, and 24-hour security. However, migrants have claimed that they were missiled and that firm personnel provided them with credentials that erroneously stated they were qualified for employment. What's next in store for the migrants? Many migrants have declared their intention to apply for asylum. However, asylum proceedings are frequently complex and beset by delays, and it might take up to four years to reach a final determination. In New York City, there were about 39,000 new immigration court cases filed between March and May of this year. After successfully submitting an asylum claim, applicants have 150 days to apply for temporary job permission. Nevertheless, they are not able to obtain a working document until that time. To assist recently arrived asylum seekers with finding immigration lawyers and helping them enroll their children in school, the city employs caseworkers. Additionally, Mr. Adams announced in June the establishment of the Asylum Application Help Center, which will assist thousands of asylum seekers by bringing together pro bono attorneys and immigration legal service providers. Officials stated that by the middle of October, the teams at the Assistance Center had assisted in the completion of over 5,600 applications. Approximately 2,000 people have applied for work visas since the Biden administration declared in September that it would provide licenses to hundreds of thousands of Venezuelan migrants who had previously entered the country. More than 1,700 applications were filed at a clinic operated by the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, the city, state, and nonprofit organizations between late September and early October, according to officials. The support center has helped 300 qualified persons with application assistance. In the city, there are reportedly 15,000 eligible individuals. Even though a record number of migrants have sought asylum, advocates and immigration attorneys warn that many, if not most, will miss the application deadline and end up in a more dangerous category of unauthorized immigrants. Many of the recently arrived immigrants in New York have already joined the ranks of undocumented laborers in the underground economy, where they face exploitation and expulsion. So this is the end of our today's video, do you like it? Kindly give your valuable response in our comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting and informative videos.